Okay, so this morning uh, we filmed a little uh, teaser that said, hey, I'm gonna be doing a video for everybody. The focus is that, you know, we're all just, um, including myself, we're all just maybe a little on edge, some of us a lot on edge, um, from not having our normal routines, um, the normal people we can interact with, the normal things we like to do to relax and deal with stress. And uh, so, so anyways, everybody's just on edge, right? Um, and I wanted to spend some time with you guys at home, with your parents, um, with this topic, with some things that we can all do, regardless of our circumstances. We can find things that we can do that we can control rather than focusing on what we can't control and being frustrated on it. But it requires deliberate thought and a deliberate mindfulness process, right? So let me start by giving you some info on me, some contact info. Then we'll just go across the top with a little descriptor, and then we'll start getting into the meat of the thing. So, Barry Jackson is my name. I'm placed at Byer High School from the Center for Human Services. I work in the counseling department. I'm just a resource for you guys. When you're on campus, things aren't going right, I try to help problem solve, fit, calm things down, whatever. I don't want to get into the weeds on that, but I'm just one of the people who do that. And the uh, phone number for the Center for Human Services is 526-1476. They handle all kinds of things, individual therapy, group therapy, drug counseling, all kinds of stuff. So if you do not have access to a private healthcare provider, uh, that would be a good resource for you guys if you're struggling, okay? My desk phone number is 492-3684, that's here at Bayer. My email here at Bayer is jackson.ba at monet.k12.ca.us. The Modesto City School Crisis Line, which is Monday through Friday, eight to five, is 492-6000. Obviously, there's always 911. Uh, and then there are other resources listed on the Bayer website. Uh, Center for Human Services has tons of resources. I have some if you were to call me. A lot of those are interchangeable, but over time they change, right? And so you may have a list from a year or two ago, and that may be quite different than what's accurate now. So today we're going to talk about stress management. Mindfulness is the key. That is something, if you ever come and talk to me, I don't, I don't care if we're talking about anger management, um, anxiety, um, relationship issues. We have to be mindful. We have to be purposeful and thoughtful in the moment about who we are, what we bring to the table, what our emotions are, what our moods are, what kind of energy level we have. And if we're able to do that, we're gonna be much more successful at doing what we want to accomplish in that day, um, whether it's a conversation or a task, right? Um, then we come over here and I wanna talk about, real briefly, anxiety, because that is a feeder in our stress. Our physical and our emotional beings are tied together. It's part of the same machine. And if we neglect one, the other will suffer. So real briefly, I'll give you this kind of cursory description. Anxiety, if you go back into a very primitive kind of mindset about um, early man, they were very much in the survival mode, right? They were uh, growing their food, making their clothes, making their homes. Uh, defending their territory against people who would raid their their uh, food and their homes and their villages. And so anxiety was this produced uh, reaction our body had in a physical way to that sense of danger, right? And there's two ways that our body really um, accentuated that. One is in the physical sense with adrenaline, uh, which gets our heart pumping and puts blood in our arms and our legs so we can fight or run away for another day, right? That fight or flight response. The other is cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And I don't wanna to get too much in the weeds on this, but it's really basically spidey senses, right? So we can hear a little better. Uh, we can see in the dark maybe a little better, but it's exhausting. Those things are exhausting to have because we are, you know, we're, we're in that heightened place of survival, right? So if we're, in a mode of anxiety all the time, we are going to be exhausted. And if we don't find ways to deal with it, we don't have ways to deal with another day and another day of troubles and stress and things that don't go right. So this is all about what we can do each day to be mindful about our approach each day to dealing with those things, right? Rather than being a, a pinball machine and just bouncing off bumpers and going through our day, which some of us do, and we tend to have bad days when we do that, right? So, coming back over here, causes of stress. 
Any of these lists that I have on here are just references for me so I don't get lost. They are not all inclusive. In fact, I'm gonna challenge you guys when you respond in the next week or so and we have a dialogue going on to give me some things that you do that not only cause stress, but how do you normally react to it? And how could you better react to it if you thought about it and things that will help you as an individual with your resources, your family, what you have at your disposal that you can handle. Uh, I mean, it, uh, not everybody has the same thing, right? Not everybody has the same bank account. So there's different things that people can do. So causes of stress. Basically, we have very little control over some basic things like money. These are all overshadowed right now by COVID, right? So money, job, relationships, school, news, illness, death. So let's take this real quickly. Money, job, tied together, right? I'll give you a for instance. I had been told on March 16th, which was a Monday, that school was closing on the 18th, so I was getting laid off, no paycheck. So immediately I'm thinking, hmm, money, but luckily, I guess, luckily I'm older, so I've had a few unforeseen moments in my life, so I don't spend every nickel I have. So I wasn't immediately panicked by that, but it certainly is a concern. So the first thing I did was check off uh, going to the unemployment office. Get that done, get that out of the way. It's just done. Can't do any more than that. And then I can move forward, right? Uh, but it wasn't my within my control to have my job or not have my job, and that happened to a lot of people, but it's still very stressful. What else happened when they took away my job just like that? No routine. I had absolutely no routine to my day. And we'll get back to how important that is. Uh, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, <clears throat> COVID, everybody's home. Maybe parents are working from home, maybe they're laid off. None of the kids are in school. You guys are on top of each other. Maybe you've got a big house, maybe you've got a small apartment. It's stressful. You might love your family, but boy, is it hard to get along with them 24 seven, right? If nobody gets a break from anybody. So those are things that we have to understand. We can be angry that school's not in session, but I'm not sure what that does for us to be angry about that. Um, we have to find ways to be productive with our energy. Um, news, right now, probably more than any other time in my lifetime, everybody's consumed with news, political news, social news, whatever. And um, there's a lot of people employed that have a very specific purpose to keep us angry and upset. It just is. I don't care what your perspective is, there's somebody on the other side of that that's gonna tell you that it's wrong. And it's really easy to promote you hating people and things that you don't know. So how do you deal with that? We will talk about that. But you know, people get upset and then what do they do? They watch more news. And then you guys are cooped up at home and grandpa's watching more news and grandpa's getting crabbier, right? It's just, it kinda is what it is. So we have to be mindful that that's not helping. It's not helping. It may be something we do as a habit. As soon as you get home from work, you want to turn on the news, whatever. You wake up in the morning, you turn on the news. But if all it does is upset you, I'm not quite sure how that's helping, right? Um, illness and death. Not just with COVID. I mean, there's, I know some people who have gotten sick and died from that, but not that many, but I have known of a few. But I'm just talking in the normal course. Things happen. People get in accidents. People get old. People get sick. Friends die, unfortunately, relatives die. And so that brings its own level of stress along with just day-to-day -day stuff, right? So how do we normally react? And let's talk about um, uh, some of these things in the context mostly of like school, because even if you're a parent, we're all dealing with the fallout of school, right? So with COVID, our no thought reactions to these things, particularly as a teenager is what? You retreat. If you're lucky enough to have your own bedroom, you go to your bedroom. You stay uh, in there a lot. Windows and doors are closed. You don't come out for meals. You don't participate in online school like you used to. Uh, you're interacting with your friends uh, less and less as time goes by. You go from uh, shooting hoops with friends in the driveway to just not going, just not hanging out anymore. Um, those things are very detrimental to staying healthy mentally. Why? Because our physical and our emotional beings are intricately connected. So we come back to retreating from day-to-day -day life because we're exhausted 
we just, oh man, I got online and it kicks me off and I try to get back in and in the team's meeting and it kicks me out. I'm just tired of it. I have extra layers to try to get my homework done. Oh my God, and I email my teachers and sometimes I forget. Oh, and I miss the deadline. And you know, so there's extra layers of stuff just to get through school that used to not be there. It's stressful for the teachers just as it is for you guys. I guarantee you, I, I can see it on everybody's face. It interrupts our sleep. If you're on your bed napping all day, are you tired come 10, 11 o'clock at night? Probably not, probably not. But even if you are, you're sleeping way too much. Sleep kind of begets sleep. At a certain point, it's too much. Um, unhealthy eating, talked about retreating, so you're not participating in family meals, that kind of thing. So what do you do? <clears throat> you do a lot of snacking. Snacking with Pop-Tarts, cookies, candy, chips, right? All the things that we crave when we don't feel good, mentally don't feel good, but they really destroy our physical health. And so we have to really pay attention to that. We have to be mindful that those kinds of go-to habits really are destructive to ourselves, to our mental health and physical health. No activity, no sunshine kind of goes hand in hand. If you're not going outside and doing things, you're not getting sunshine. Why is sunshine important? Vitamin D. Vitamin D pushes against depression. It's just the way it is. You absorb it through your skin, right? So that's something to pay attention to. Now, I'm not saying go out and get two hours of a sunburn, right? But go outside, shoot some hoops, get on your bike. We'll go through some ideas here in a second. There's a lot of things we can do. Sometimes we focus on what we can't do and then we just shut down. I can't do that. I can't, I usually go and do that with my friends and I can't now, so I'm just gonna play video games in my room. And a little bit of video games, there's no, I don't see a problem with that. When I see someone spending hours and hours and hours every day playing video games and not going outside and being physical, that's a problem because it throws your whole system out of balance. Uh, fun, that's, that's key. When we kind of retreat and all we do is lay in bed and do very little with school, do very little with the family, do very little with our friends, we're watching videos, we text a few people, oh, we go to sleep, we get up, we have a Pop-Tart, we go back to bed. Um, we're not having any fun, we're just existing. And that existence makes that bad mood grow and grow and grow and it makes it harder to shake off. Um, we procrastinate with schoolwork particularly, let's talk about that right now, with schoolwork. We procrastinate, we shut down, we're overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, I just kind of checked out for two weeks and I wasn't really paying attention. I was online, but I had my phone next to me and I was just playing games with my buddies and doing whatever and then all of a sudden, whoa, I got two weeks of all these assignments. It's too much, so I'm just not doing it. I'll do it next quarter. In the whatever, a couple thousand kids that I've dealt with, I have never met somebody yet who does it who says I'll do it next quarter. It just doesn't happen that way. I understand that, I have to fight that myself, but procrastination only helps that bad mood grow because we're dealing with the stress of, oh, I've gotta do it, I've gotta do it. Maybe I'm doing something fun in the moment, but it's not completely fun because I've got this hanging over my head that I know I've gotta do. Um, the no thought reactions, more news in response to watching news and getting upset. Do not, do not, resort to smoking and drinking. Adults, particularly of my generation, tended to resort to drinking to deal with depression and stuff, generally. Um, not for everybody, but for a lot of people, and still do. Your generation deals a lot with smoking. It doesn't help. I understand wanting to escape uh, the reality of what's going on, that it might not be a pleasant reality for you. School's falling apart, mom and dad are fighting, they're getting a divorce. Uh, there's money issues, somebody lost their job. I, I understand, but that doesn't help. So how can we be mindful, right? How can we be thoughtful? How can we be deliberate about those realities that occur to us that are stressful, that cause us anxiety, that make us wanna retreat, that make us not wanna do stuff? And understand when you are stressed out, everything I'm gonna talk about that can help, will help about 10% as a kind of a good mindset, 10% happier. It's not like you can do one of these things and go, 
Hey, Barry, nice, man, I took a bike ride. I have no stress now. Mm, that'd be cool. Or if I had magic rocks that I could put one in your backpack and that would be great. But it doesn't work that way. You have to have the right mindset. These things will be very helpful, absolutely will be helpful, but they won't eliminate stress. They will help manage it. See, this very top word is management. It's not eliminating stress, where I have a question mark by it over here. It's not eliminating stress, because stress, unfortunately, is part of living. It's part of life. So are good things, and so we have to gain skills and be thoughtful about how we're gonna manage that, because if you're lucky, you're gonna live to be as old as my dad, Mr. Park. But who knows? That's pretty old. So, mindful responses. You wanna stay connected. Remember, particularly for teenagers, but adults do the same thing. We retreat, we get overwhelmed, we shut down. Uh, I had one of my little puppy dogs uh, die very suddenly this summer. I spent a day and a half on the couch, and then I said, you know this, I feel sad, uh, but this isn't helping. I gotta get moving, I gotta get going, I gotta take advantage of my summer and enjoy the little dog that I still have and get going and do some things, right? So we have to be mindful. I would not have done that had I just kind of surrendered to being sad about that little puppy dog. Because it was sad, it was really sad. But we've gotta move forward. We've gotta be mindful that those are maybe normal reactions, retreating, maybe kind of a normal thing, but it doesn't help. And we have to be mindful about how long we're gonna allow that to happen to ourselves, right? Before we pick ourselves up and move forward with something and feel just 10% happier. And we stack a few of those 10 percents on top of each other and pretty soon hey I'm, I'm i'm actually feeling a lot better it's not perfect i could i could probably talk to mrs mayor right now about my puppy dog and make myself cry now but what good is that going to do right so mindful responses things we can control you stay connected you don't go to your room you get online on time every class every day and maybe you have a lot of assignments you haven't turned in or even attempted. Okay, all right. But that doesn't mean you just check out and don't do anything. That means you stay engaged and all other things become possible if you stay engaged. All other things. You can think about, oh, my GPA, oh, my this. Okay, maybe, all right. But we will deal with that secondarily. First is let's not retreat from our responsibilities. Let's stay engaged in school few days a year when you guys are on campus, it'll be usually a wintertime day and it'll usually be a Monday and I'll be like, oh man, I'm not feeling it, I don't wanna to go to school. Those are the days I get out of bed really fast and I go to school. Because I know as soon as I get here and talk to somebody, staff or kid, I feel better. Even if I only do half what I would like to get done because I'm just not feeling it, that's half, that's half. And at two o'clock or whenever my day ends, usually it's around 4.30 for me, I feel great because I got myself out of bed and I got myself to work and I did half. And almost always there is a surprise at work that I'm glad I was there. Not, I don't mean a good surprise, like there was something I really needed to deal with that wasn't planned. So I'm really glad that I did that. And it's really weird how that happens. On those days where I really have to challenge myself to get here, wow. Is it awesome that I was here at the end of the day? I go, that's the reason I got out of bed right there. And it wasn't planned, okay? So we stay connected. Don't go to your room. Open those, if you're having trouble go to school, open those curtains. Open the curtains in every room in your house except mom and dad's bedroom and get some sun in there. If you're a coffee drinker, grab some coffee, T take the dog, walk outside, wake up, get some fresh air. Get outside, experience that. Don't hover inside in a dark house. That's gonna promote you just kind of being down and dreary and oh, I don't wanna do anything and oh, school sucks and yeah, I get it. Um, I don't really, there's not too many people that are really happy with the reality of school right now. So we have to make the best of it. We have to realize if we give into that and we stay in the dark and we retreat and we sleep a lot and we don't go outside and we disconnect and we procrastinate and we smoke, we kind of have set ourselves up to be completely unsuccessful and have everything way harder than it need be, right? Doesn't mean it's fun, but a lot harder than it need be. Um, activity, go for a walk. Oh, Barry, I, I don't have a bike. 
Uh, I don't belong to a gym. A lot of gyms are closed now, anyways. But I don't belong to a gym. Uh, I don't have a skateboard. Uh, I don't live in a neighborhood I can go for a jog. It's it's not safe. My parents won't let me go. Okay. So you can uh, put in some fun music in your earbuds, put a sign on your bedroom door or on the garage and say, hey, leave me alone for half an hour, go in there and dance. Work up a sweat, get an aerobic workout in and have fun while you do it. There are ways to do things. You can do sit-ups, you can do push-ups. I do a video on Wednesdays. Other people do them too. There's nothing magical about them, but it's just energizing to do it with somebody else. And it, it's not like you have to go in there and crank out 100 push-ups but you're doing something. Something is always better than nothing. And what we tend to do is find reasons to say, I can't do what I want, so I'm doing nothing. Right? I, 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 I've thought that way. And I have to be very mindful and say, wow, that's, uh, just because I can't do 30 things doesn't mean I can't do 20, whatever. Or because I can't do A and B doesn't mean I can't do C. C is not as good, but it's better than nothing, right? Um, healthy eating. Sodas are terrible for you. Terrible, terrible. You're teenagers, you're gonna eat snacky foods, you're gonna eat fast foods, you're gonna drink sodas. You will be healthier physically and healthier emotionally if you limit in a mindful way the junk food and the fast food. It's just absolutely true. I worked at McDonald's in high school. I've eaten an awful lot of fast food in my day, um, but I didn't have people at that age saying, wow, that's really not healthy for you. So now you have the advantage of that, and when we know better, we do better. So try to limit the amount that you eat, the amount that you drink, you're not always gonna have a choice. Your parents control the pocketbook, they control the grocery shopping. Interact with them, say, hey, can I go with you? Can we pick out stuff other than just this? Can we look at other things to replace that? Yeah, we can have some chips, but not just 20 bags of chips. Maybe there's a bag of chips that needs to last us for a while, and then we have all these other things, fruits, veggies, all that kind of stuff. The boring stuff that we don't like to eat, but it's good for us. And I guarantee you, it makes you feel better. Um, so I've talked about the sodas, the snacks, your body wants water. Very first thing you should do in the morning, I drink a lot of coffee. Very first thing I do in the morning is drink water. Very first thing. Because you've gone eight, 10 hours without eating, usually, and without drinking, usually. So what does your body want more than anything? Water, water, give me water. So that'll help wake you up in the morning. You have trouble waking up in the morning? Wake up, get some water, and then start doing what you gotta do with your routine, right? These two things I have start because of anything up here, they are something you always have to be mindful of and it will help you no matter if you're 59 or 19. It just doesn't matter. Um, routine. Remember I talked about when school blew up on everybody back in March? And in two days, my job disappeared. Now, I knew I was coming back in August, but that's a long ways from mid-March, right? And I know because of my job and what I focus on that a big part of mental health is routine. You have to have a reason to get up. You've got to have a schedule. You've got to have somewhere to go. Now, if you're on vacation or it's a Saturday or something, it's no big deal. You do whatever you sleep in. That's what that stuff is about. But if you all of a sudden have your reason for getting up and being interactive with the world taken away, I could have slept all day. I could have slept till 11, till 12. It would have turned into one o'clock, two o'clock. Uh, did I even take a shower today? Uh, wow, how long have I been wearing these uh, sweats? Um, you know, it doesn't take very long without structure to kind of just lose it. And that affects your mental health significantly and that it's that much harder to think clearly so you can mindfully start pulling yourself out of it. So a routine is huge. First thing I did was I got out a list and this was on, this was, cause I've got a list right next to it. This was on my daily routine and I'm not kidding. Wake up at 6.30, have coffee, walk the dog, um, uh, water the plants, uh, do laundry, clean the kitchen, work out, um, so there's a lot of things on there that really aren't, I mean, in the normal course, I would never have that on a list. Like that's my routine. Cause I just get up and I get going and I brush my teeth and I take a shower and I get dressed and they have that on my list. So that by nine thirty, ten 10 o'clock, whoa, I've checked all these things off. 
really kind of nothing, but it was kind of like telling myself, yeah, I'm going, I've got my day started, and it's not 2.30 in the afternoon when I have my first cup of coffee, because that's not a good thing. Um, making a list, when you are sitting down with school right now, have a piece of paper right next to you. I think you should sit down about nine o'clock, look at the buyer bulletin, look at any updates that are coming around, Mr. Park's uh, Statement, when he comes out in the mornings, they have buyer bulletins, they have whatever, stuff comes out. Athletics, look at our website. Just start to familiarize yourself in an easy way with buyer every morning about nine o'clock. Have that piece of paper next to you so as you go through your day, if a teacher says this, this, you gotta turn this in here, this is due, this is where you look this up, you just make yourself little notes. And you say, oh, I've gotta, that's right, before I uh, shut down today, I've gotta like email Mrs. Mayor, I forgot, I gotta, mm, you gotta put that down so that that becomes your routine. Because if you have to remember everything, you're not going to. You're gonna forget, people will be annoyed, you'll be annoyed at yourself, and you stress yourself out. Why stress yourself out when you can just keep a list? And then when you have a list, you can prioritize. Let's go back to procrastinating, not getting homework done. So if you're gonna prioritize, let's say you've got 15 different assignments through three or four different classes that you just checked out for a week or two and you just didn't do it. And now you're like, oh, my grades, so my parents are on my case, my teachers are emailing me, oh my God, it's just too much, I can't do it. You make a list. Now I know you can find things on Power School and all, whatever, <coughs> Schoology, but make a list and prioritize it. And maybe that list is so long that you're like, I don't know, I, I don't know how to start. I, I don't know, it's too much. Well, there's a lot of ways to take little bites out of that and get yourself motivated. One could be, what's my favorite class? Yeah, but I only have one thing to do there and it's just five points, it doesn't really matter. Do it, boom, that's off your list. Get you going, what's the next thing? Um, well, I really don't like this class, but that's an easy assignment I can, boom, get that off your list. Pretty soon, your list goes from 15 to seven, to six to five. Maybe you don't even get all the way through the list, but man, you've really made progress on that, right? So there are ways to do it by making a list, prioritizing that list, because you procrastinated, and obviously that has to do with making a plan. That plan falls into line with getting a routine for your day, your morning. I suggest if you are <clears throat> home, particularly if you're home alone, parents are working, there's nobody else there, and you are just there during the day, your phone is a huge dis distraction, everything in your life is a huge distraction. TV, computer games, friends, texting. Um, if you don't disengage from those things, you are making school much harder than it need be. I understand it, it would be really hard for me. When I was a student here, the only way I got my homework done was staying after school in the library. Because I knew, if I go home, I'm not doing it. That was me. So I found my plan that worked for me. You've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be mindful. And you've got to say, you know what? Um, wow, there is just no way that I'm getting through first period with the TV on because it's right there and I'm just always paying attention to it. Turn it off. Turn your phone off. I, I'm guessing half the kids at least have their phone on and they're chatting with friends and playing games when school's on. Um, I, I understand it, but you are making school much harder than need be. And that's on you. That's a choice that you're making without being mindful. Because if you're mindful, if you're thinking about it, you're like, you know, this, this really is not uh, a fun way to do school. And I can either make it kind of impossible or doable. And those are the kind of decisions that will push it one direction or the other. So we talked about uh, things that you can do to nurture yourself, nurture your spirit, nurture your soul. Hobbies, people have different things they like to do. Musical instruments, drawing, listening to music, artwork, dance, writing. I know uh, several kids like to write movie scripts. Whether that ends up being something they can ever make money off of or whatever, I, but if it makes them feel good, then go for it and do it. Pets, pets are huge, I talked about my pets. A lot of people have pets and some people don't. Maybe they want them, but their landlord won't let them have it, the apartment complex, whatever. Somebody's allergic to dogs in their house, whatever. So you say, yeah, Barry, I'd love to have a dog, but, or a cat, I just can't. Turn on YouTube videos and look, look at uh, puppy videos, kitty videos, laughing baby videos. 
five minutes of that, I guarantee you you're going to be in a great mood. I guarantee you. You have to be creative about those things. What makes me happy? What nurtures my soul? Oh, I don't have a dog, so, you know, okay. I, I mean, that's a huge part of my life. But I guarantee you that I am occasionally looking at puppy videos. Guarantee you, even though I have my own. So we've got to know ourselves. We've got to be mindful. We've got to have a realistic expectation of what we can do that's going to make us 10% happier. These little chunks that are just going to help us get to a better place, get us to the end of the day in a happier place. Um, here are some things that also help reorganize our head and keep us in control, right? Because when these things happen, they're not in our control. We have to remember that. What we want to do, like you have a boyfriend-girlfriend issue. How many people, whether it's you or a parent or a friend, want to make that person like you again? Is that doable? I don't think so. But that's what we want to do. We want to force that person to agree with us, to like us, to whatever. And we put all of our energy in things that are kind of not doable. Instead of things that, and that causes us to retreat and shut down, makes those moods, those emotions really deep and dark if we let them go too far, instead of trying to find ways to nurture ourselves, take care of ourselves, um, here are some things. Make your bed, clean your room, clean your car, clean your parents' car. I guarantee you, if mom or dad or both are scrambling and they're working all day and they're driving when they're not working and they're sleeping when they're not driving, there are some people who have those kind of lives and they're paying the rent, right? Now that doesn't mean they have a lot of time for you, unfortunately, but how would you like to have whatever problems you have now? Plus, ooh, we don't have enough money for rent. So let's be thankful for some of those things that we have that are easily lost because we're just not happy in the moment. And I get it, I'm not trying to minimize that, but we can also do things like, hey mom, I'm, let's, uh, you know, today's your day off. Let, and you notice she hasn't washed her car in a long time. It's really dirty. It's full of wrappers from food and whatever in the car. She hasn't vacuumed in a long time. Go out there and clean her car for her. She'll appreciate it. You'll feel great that you could do, actually do something for mom. Because everybody's like, well, I want to do something for my mom, but I don't know what. Right? Um, turn off the news. You got... A uh, grumpy old guy at home who's watching the news all the time and griping and complaining. Uh, and so they keep watching more and more news and then they're always griping and complaining and they're just angry and they're whatever at everybody in the house and at nobody and you're like, oh my gosh. Turn that off. Let's play some cards. Let's play some uh, Yahtzee. Let's take a walk with the dog. Let's picnic in the park on Saturday. Let's uh, do a puzzle. Um, have meals together. Oh, but that's really hard because my mom works until seven and then, well, maybe you can fix a few things getting dinner kind of sort of going before she gets there so you don't have to eat at nine. You can all eat together and you can all talk about the day and how was her day? How was your day? You might have some ideas you can help each other out with things, right? We have to get reconnected. This is huge. We have to get reconnected. And our, our lives in normal times are very disconnected. And now we've got this forced disconnectedness. And that's tough, um, along with the extra layers of just getting stuff done at school and whatever. So it's, it, it's just something we have to be very mindful about, that we can have a, a plan not to solve our problems and eliminate stress, but to make that big ball of stress just manageable enough. Instead of staying in bed all day, we can engage our day. We can be on top of school. We may not have straight A's. I'm normally an A and B student. Man, I'm struggling for C's. Well, I, I get it. I get it. Communicate with teachers, lots of emails. Um, stay engaged online, on time, every class, every day. Don't procrastinate. Make a list. Have a routine. These things are pretty basic and they are critical to being focused, mentally healthy, physically healthy. Um, two things I will, I'll go over at, at, a, at, a, at a future video <clears throat> and it's about controlled breathing so that's more these are more habits that manage stress in the long term right controlled breathing and a calm app on your phone are things that are focused on dealing with you in the moment if you have a 
spike in anxiety or stress in the moment and you just boom, you just you can see it coming and it's coming right 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 at your face and you're like I, I've got to stop I've got to, I've got to get control again so those are some things we can talk about at a later time that will help in the moment um, so all of this talks about changing of habits right it's very hard to do kind of impossible if you're not mindful why because when we don't think about it this is what we do and it doesn't help and everything I talked about here if you're overwhelmed you will swear up and down you cannot do it you can't go to, I don't have energy for the gym I don't have energy to ride my bike I don't have energy to go outside I don't have energy to get online with and yes you do I promise you you do you may not be able to do everything that I'm talking about here as a replacement within a couple of days but if you make a list and you're mindful about it you can say okay I have no routine I do not make a list of things that I have to do with school every day I don't prioritize a list because I don't have one I never go outside I never get any sunshine I never get any exercise I eat snacks and drink sodas all day and I never sit down and have a meal Wow, what a formula for feeling terrible. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you're not being mindful. That's it. And you have that ability. I don't care who you are on this campus. You have that ability. Okay? So, remember, physical and emotional connections are huge. Can't separate them. They're very much intertwined. Um, everybody here thinks about you guys every day. It is... Uh, Kind of the first thing on their minds when they wake up the last thing when they go to bed and we hope that sooner than later everybody gets back to some sense of normalcy on campus in the meantime look out after each other now as i said stay connected i have this little arrow that comes up here and it says talk to someone so that's really important i don't want to end today without saying that whether it be a parent a best friend an aunt an uncle a grandparent a pastor a minister a counselor a teacher Reach out. If you're really, really, really struggling, reach out. Let them know you're struggling. That teacher that you just don't get, you don't understand what the heck they're talking about in math. Instead of just not interacting at all and shutting down and not turning in any work and not communicating at all, the teacher has a lot of different options that they can interpret that. So you need to be able to say, wow, I don't get that somehow. Now you can do it through an email. You don't have to raise your hand in class. You just do it in an email and say, I just don't get it. And they will somehow try to help you get it. There's no guarantees, but you've got to reach out to people. You've got to um, be okay with leaning on people because we all need that at times. I certainly have in my life. And... Um, so I wish you all a lot of happiness. And when you guys um, check in with me on our, on our link, we're going to have a way for you guys to give us some feedback. Okay. And I want to know what you do as mindful responses to take care of yourself. Um, also, what do you do that you just don't even think about? But ooh, yeah, that doesn't help. And I don't do this, but my brother does this, or my mom does this. Okay, cool. We don't have this or this or this, but we can do this. Great. Barry, you didn't have this on the board. What about this? There is no doubt. You can come up with 10 more things for each item I have on there. That would be good ideas. Okay? These are just kind of generic things that everybody can kind of start getting their head wrapped around, that they can start figuring out what can I do for myself and my family. Okay? So... It was great to have this opportunity with you guys, and we will talk to you probably next week, right? Okay, bye-bye.